Let me give you a quick introduction to Partners for Our Children. Um, we're a unique, uh, I, I think we are unique, public-private collaboration between DSHS, uh, University of Washington School of Social Work, it's really the University of Washington. My dean must have edited my slide there or something. Um, <laughs> and uh, private community leaders uh, committed to making positive changes in the child welfare system. You know, the state brings, you know, access to the populations. If we learn something important, they're in a position to implement it, they're invested in it. Uh, all, our all the work we do is in close collaboration with the Children's Administration. Um, the university brings, you know, folks like us in the room. And also, we have the Child Welfare, we have one of the Child Welfare Train programs in School Social Work stipend program for people who are work in the field. And actually, the school has a contract to do some of the training of existing workers for the agency, has, has had that historically. Um, and we have partnerships with like Lucy's organization. You know, we, we do a lot of workforce development stuff. And then the private sector has money. The Bombers gave us $10 million to found this center, $7 million of which is in, for the first seven years, $1 million in core funding for seven years. The other $3 million was endowed positions. Uh, um, also expertise relevant to improving human services systems. So I've got some board members that are pretty smart around strategic planning, marketing, things like that. And then also social and political capital <coughs> to open doors when they're closed. <coughs> we do four things. Research and policy analysis, so just trying to describe what is. We have um, all of the state's child welfare administrative data on kids in care, child abuse referrals, et cetera. And we have access to all the data DSHS has, Medicaid, et cetera, when we need it for our research purposes. Quite often that kind of research um, studying basic social processes leads to ideas about what works, but then you have to test them. So we can use our, our resources to develop and test uh, innovative practicing or innovative uh, practices, programs, and policies. We're also engaged in, in partnering with other folks to improve the workforce, and we have a communications and public education function. What's different really about what we're doing? Um, our focus is really on children living in state care and their families. So. To the chagrin of a lot of folks, we're not really doing prevention science in the sense of preventing child maltreatment, although we think that's important. And some of the work I think we're doing can be used to, to, to move that agenda forward. Our focus is really on the kids and families already involved in the system. Um, we like to think those four strategies are really what is necessary from kind of an R&D workforce. You know, all those strategies together really have uh, a lot of bang for the buck. We have long-term funding with the prospects of an endowed you know, permanent endowment for the organization if we're successful at what we're doing. And I think the partnership creates kind of an interesting accountability mechanism in the sense that it holds the university accountable for trying to answer questions that are actually important to people in the real world here and now. Um, it holds the folks in the agency accountable because at the end of the day, we will disseminate everything we find. This isn't kind of an internal research operation that DSHS has of, oops, we don't like that finding, and then nobody sees it. I mean, anything we find is going to become public. And it holds the private sector accountable because the private sector tends to go give money this, that, you know, flavor of the month. And at least our partners are folks who are willing to be patient enough to see what seems to work or has promise. And, and, and we're going to try something. We don't know whether it works, but at the end of the day, we will because we're going to evaluate it. it. I think holds the private sector accountable in a productive way. I won't belabor this, but it shows you those four strategies. And basically what we think we do with those four strategies is we, we create these change levers. So, <clears throat> we generate knowledge of the populations and services. We generate informed engagement of policymakers and informed public engagement. And those things lead to two things uh, more effective policies, programs, and practices for kids and families, and a high quality workforce. And if you could do those two things, that ought to lead to improved outcomes for kids in terms of safety, permanency, and well being. So that's just kind of a basic logic model behind our center. So here are our current priorities. The one I left off, it's sort of telling, but it is actually one of our priorities is youth aging out of foster care. But um, that was sort of reluctant. The Child Welfare Agency was not interested in that when I got here. Um, and they sort of reluctantly engaged. But now they actually have a meeting coming up next month where they've decided, what, if we were starting all over again in our programs for youth aging out of foster care, what would we do? And they invited me to that. So I feel very happy that I won't forget to put it up there anymore. <laughs> Uh, foster parent recruitment and retention is one of our priorities. We're doing an evaluation of the Mockingbird family model, which is a constellation of foster homes. 
and we're working with Shannon and company. Uh, eventually, we're, we're getting there. <laughs> we have IRB approval. Very good. They started the groups already. And I heard from Dana. I mean, the CA still wants to do that yeah. for evaluation project key, which is another way of supporting foster parents. We're doing work uh, really describing the family reunification process, kids going home. And what we've identified is huge variation between regions and the state. Median time to reunification varies from uh, around 30 days in one region of the state to 400 days in another. I mean, it's a huge variation. That can't be due to the kids. There's, there's system factors going on. So we see that as kind of low-hanging fruit. Let's figure out what's going on. Yeah. In the court, the interaction between the courts and the child welfare agency appear to be a big part of it. Not all of it, but a big part of it. So we're working with them. Um, we're evaluating a casework model that the state's implementing called, uh, implementing called solution-based casework. Um, we're looking at ways to increase birth parent engagement and services, and actually the practice model has a lot to do with that. That practice model, the idea is to engage families. And that's, you know, one of the major projects. We also have, um, we're doing some beginning evaluation work that could lead to more rigorous work around uh, some parent mentoring engagements, uh, both foster parents mentoring of birth parents, uh, but maybe, to me more interestingly, some parent-to-parent -parent mentoring. So parents that have already been involved in the child welfare system meeting parents coming into the system early, particularly focusing on helping them understand the whole dependency process, the court, what's this about, what do you need to do, what happens if you don't do what you need to do, things like that. And then the legislation that we're involved in really grew out of just our belief that the division of labor between the public and private sector and service delivery in the state is not very well thought out. That the private agencies there's 1,800 separate contracts that Children's Administration uses, most of them very, fairly narrow. Um, that makes it hard for them to manage those contracts, so it's not a very efficient assignment of families to services they need. And it also makes it virtually impossible to hold providers accountable for outcomes, because if, if you've broken it down into very small units of service, or even big units of service, <clears throat> but those providers still don't really control all the you know, variables they need in order to be accountable for getting a kid home safely, for example. It's kind of impossible and unfair to hold them accountable. So we had a meeting back in October to discuss that. I didn't put, I didn't write any legislation. The legislator came out with this sort of grandiose scheme to privatize everything in the state. To make a long story short, that's moved more in a rational direction of trying some things out over the next few years. And if the legislation passes, one thing will happen, even if the legislation doesn't pass, I think the Children's Administration is going to move fairly rapidly to consolidation of contracts mm -hmm. and to trying to in implement performance-based contracting in its existing contracts. Um, <clears throat> if it passes, there will also be an experiment, if you like, a demonstration of handing all of the basic services over to not-for-profit providers under a big kind of umbrella, almost managed care framework, you might say, with the state agency handling child abuse investigations, standard setting, licensing, monitoring, etc. Which is a radical concept in this state, is actually quite common, has been around for many years in other places in the country. So that's kind of where we're at. So if, if I could ask one question about your sure. mission, the, uh, whether it's the intervention development and testing or <coughs> is Partners for Our Children exclusively focused on developing and testing those uh, models in Washington State, or does it also have a, you know, we're, if there's an opportunity somewhere else, we're going to see what we can learn there as well and apply it here and elsewhere? If, 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 it's, if we're using our resources in any significant way, I mean, the way I would answer that is, as an organization, we're focused on Washington State. That being said, um, in order to keep both for reasons of drawing attention to the center and to keep people like me happy. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. um, If there's somebody else that's going to fund something and it's out of the state, and I, I don't have to go to my board and explain to Connie Ballmer and company how we're subsidizing this project in California, New York, or something, then yeah. So my study, I'm continuing to do my Midwest study. That is now housed at, at Partners for Our Children. It's funded entirely by the Gates Foundation. You know, The center doesn't really subsidize it in any significant way. So, we can do other work, but our core funding and our core mission, and our partner really is is the state. So uh, at the point where I'm going to my board saying we want to do this big thing somewhere else, you know, the secretary of DSHS, and you know, they're, they're not going to be interested in that. So. 
Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.